737, it explains to us that that well is the Holy Spirit who is literally God coming to dwell within us and becoming that spring of life and water that lasts forever. Finally, verse 14, he says, this is the kind of water that gives eternal life. So this water that Jesus offers is unlike any other water. If I can understand these true things, that I'm broken, that Jesus <laughs> offers hope and healing for my brokenness, and, and third, that he offers water that is unlike any other water. There's a couple different kinds of people that I want to reach this morning as we wrap it up. First, first of all, is the kind of person who maybe has never encountered Jesus and ever taken a drink from the water that he offers. I don't ever want to take for granted wherever I speak that, that we all know who Jesus is. And so maybe there's even someone here in this small room this morning that would say, I've never, never even understood who Jesus is and, and received his free gift. The offer, if, if that's you in this situation this morning, the offer is, is from Jesus, that he's pursuing you, just like he pursued this woman at the well. And so respond. Come quickly to him. Drink deeply from what he has to offer. Second, though, I think more likely is the other person that I want to reach is the person like me, the person who has taken the, the water that Jesus offers I've taken that water. I've even experienced how wonderful and how satisfying it is, how it's become a well of water springing up inside of me. But somewhere along the way, life happened, and, and I've kind of forgotten about that source of life, and I've begun to, to go to some other sources of life. I begin going to drink at other wells to try to quench this thirst again in, in me rather than drinking from this well that he's placed inside of me. And so I don't know what that is. You begin to, to, to look to relationships or family or addictions or whatever it is. But I think a lot of us are like that. We begin to go drink at different wells. And if that's you this morning, the offer is, is just to return. And the invitation is return to that well, that source that he has placed inside of you. One drink in the beginning is not enough. It's something you've got to go back to over and over, day after day. You've got to keep coming back to the source of life. And so I want to pray, but as you, if you identify with either of those situations, I just invite you to take a risk this morning and, and simply invite you to take the risk of spending some time talking with Jesus about it, whatever it is whatever that pain is or whatever that disappointment or whatever that longing is that maybe he's shown you this morning, spend some time talking because he already knows what that is. It's a little bit of a risk to be honest with Jesus and yourself about that. But then I, I also invite you to take an even bigger risk of maybe talking to someone else about, about that thing in your life. That's what your community is for. And if you can dare to expose that brokenness to someone else around you, they can help together lead you back to the source of life, the source of water that will truly quench your thirst and where you'll find healing. So I want to just pray over whatever situation you're in this morning and just ask, again, the Spirit to, to drive these truths home to our hearts. Let's pray. Jesus, I see in this story... Uh, of you and the Samaritan woman at the well, I see an incredible compassion in you. I see an incredible longing in you, a longing to reach those who are marginalized, to those who are maybe uh, have, have pushed themselves so deep into their own pain and shame and maybe even rejection and disappointment that that they're kind of closed off to, to this amazing thing you have to offer. But I see you gently and gracefully uh, pressing into our heart, always with an invitation to, to be honest about who we are, be honest about what we carry, and then and just pour that out to you and come to you for your healing. And so I just pray that uh, in any group this size, I know there are people who are holding on to things as, as I do at times in my life, Jesus. I pray that you'll just come in and break... Uh, the fear that would hold us back from being honest about our own brokenness. I pray that you'll give us just 
the courage to step out and to respond to your invitation for truly satisfying water and healing uh, that no one else can offer us. And I pray that you'll give us the boldness to even step out and take a risk and expose some of these some of our own brokenness to those around us, those who we are in close community with, those who we are in close relationship with. And just pray that you would uh, spirit work among us and give us the courage to, to step out and do that. Uh, so Jesus, just he minister your healing and, and uh, speak to each of us in the way that we need to hear from you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. taller than my wife now, though. Yeah, Good. Good. real quick. Uh, elders as well, well, we'll pray for Tim. Thanks. Doug, you can come as well. Thanks. Let's pray for Tim and his family. Father God, thank you so much for the mission that you had before Tim and Corey and their kids as well. And we just want to continue to pray for the vision of the mission that you have in front of them, the courage of the steps of obedience that you have set before them. Continue to fill them with peace and comfort and confidence in knowing that those steps are prepared by the very feet of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for the heart that he continues to have, not only for the gospel, but for our being used in a way that would speak the gospel into an area that would never have heard it, or to give a second chance or a renewal of a heart that has stepped away. Father God, to continue to not only build up his family, but continue to, to, to strengthen the partnership between a husband and a wife, between Tim and Corey, as they go into this field of knowing that when they go together, not only are they being the, the hands and feet of your son, Jesus Christ, but they continue to be an imitation as well as an example of a marriage that is honoring to you and can be some type of a, an example of a, of a healthy relationship of a pursuit of your son, Jesus Christ. Mm. We say this all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who gives us power and not only stepping forward with the gospel, but continuing to have a heart and a body that desires to run this race and run the race well. We say it's all in the beautiful name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay, we'll conclude our worship service with a hymn, which is 388. 388, have thine own way, Lord. Please stand up and we'll sing all four verses of 388, have thine own way. I 
Thank you for your singing and please remain standing for the benediction. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>